Hello everyone, welcome to P3 Knowledge. I'm your trainer Salah Haswa and today we'll be talking about risk response strategies. Before we talk about the risk response strategies, let's talk about the definition of project risk. Project risk is an uncertain event that if it occurs has impact over the project objectives. We have here three highlighted words. Let's try to get a better understanding of each one of these. Uncertain, it means it has a probability, and this probability or likelihood, it has a 1% to 99% chance of happening. So what about the 0% or 100%? They're actually considered certainty or fact. And of course, the way we treat facts or certainty is quite different than the way we treat risks. The second word, impact. And here we're talking about positive or negative incurred results and normally those results are measured either by time or cost and as we can see from those two words we have probability and impact and those are considered the two main characteristics of risks bear in mind there are many other characteristics such as proximity frequency detectability etc but here we're going just to focus on the probability and impact project objectives what does that tell us it tells us that it is a project related risk because we have so many uncertainties around the world the one impacting our project is considered a project related risk so basically we have two main types of risk we have positive risks and we have negative risks the positive risk called opportunities the negative risks called threats now the way we treat opportunities it's quite different than the way we treat threats that's why we have different strategies for each one however the principle is the same the first principle is we're going to try to eliminate the uncertainty it means we're going to try to make it a certainty and in that case either we're going to make it 100% or 0% and of course the 100% should go to the opportunities however the 0% will go to the threats so when we're trying to make this positive risk 100% it's called exploit and when we're trying to make this threat a 0% it's called avoid what about the second principle to minimize the uncertainty and here we're talking about trying to make the uncertainty closer to being a certainty it means driving the probability of the uncertainty toward 100% or toward the 0% but not reaching the 100% nor the 0% and in case of the opportunities it's called enhance and in case of threats it's called mitigate what about the third principle relocate uncertainty and uh, that means trying to put part of the risk or all risk to a third party and in case of positive risk we call it share and in case of the threat we call it transfer because share is something that you're going to join with a third party but transfer try to give it away for them to take responsibility what about the fourth principle keep uncertainty it means keep it untouched leave it as it is and in case of opportunities it's called accept and the same goes for the threats also called accept so in summary uh, the risk response strategies as follows for the positive risk or opportunity we have exploit enhance share or accept for negative risks we have avoid mitigate transfer and accept however there is one more part to the accept for the negative risk we have active and passive acceptance and when we're talking about active acceptance it means to do something after risk occurrence while when we're talking about passive acceptance to do nothing now for us to understand what mean active acceptance it means that when the risk materializes, you have a two choices either to do something about it or not and in case if you have a prepared a plan before to deal with this risk if materialized then it's called contingency plan however if you did not have and on the spot you improvise and you figured out a way to deal with that risk it's called workaround and sometimes if you prepare the plan which in this case called contingency plan and it did not work out and you have a secondary plan and normally we call it plan B 
Here it's called fallback plan. Now, what's the difference between those three that we have in the, uh, the negative risk strategies, avoid, mitigate, transfer, against the active acceptance? Actually, avoid, mitigate, transfer strategies that you need it to do for the risk before it happens, while active acceptance is to do something after the risk happens. Let's take an example on how to deal with positive risks. A customer offered $20,000 in bonus if the program coding is completed two months earlier than planned. The first strategy we have for dealing with opportunities is exploit. And in this scenario, to exploit the situation, we could be hiring a senior programmer that's able to complete the program coding in that time frame and utilize this opportunity to take the $20,000 in bonus. The second strategy is enhance. And in that case, we could be giving certain training for our programmers in order to, to increase their chances of getting that bonus. Third one is share. By trying to contract a special company specializing in program coding and share this opportunity with them in order to get this $20,000 in bonus. The fourth one would be accept. It means to do nothing. Now, an example on how to deal with negative risks. You have planned an adventurous trip to go swim with the sharks and take exotic photos. Deadly shark attack has been identified as the main threat for this trip. So to deal with this negative risk, the first strategy we have is avoid. And in that case, either you're going to cancel the whole trip, or maybe you could be renting a metal cage that will avoid a shark attack against you. The second strategy would be mitigate, and in that case we could be using shark baits, put it in a certain zone, and make those sharks more attracted to that bait than you as a diver. The third one is transfer. In that case you're going to hire a specialist or a professional to dive with the sharks and take those photos for you. The fourth one would be accept. And of course, when we're talking accept, it's either active or passive. If it is active acceptance, we would be taking a spear gun. In case of a shark attack, you would be using that weapon against that shark. If it is a passive acceptance, you would be doing nothing. So what comes next after you have already selected your strategies, how to deal with your project risk, and you already defined an action plan for each risk? What comes next? First of all, you have to bear in mind that some chosen risk response plans created or caused another risk. For example, if getting sick is considered a risk and using a medicine is the strategy on how to deal with that risk if materialized, you need to understand that it might cause side effects and that's what we call secondary risks. Also. Not all risks are eliminated after deciding on risk response plans because some of the risk has been accepted, left as they are, and some other risk remained after we have done our mitigation or transfer. Uh, of course, for the positive one would be considered enhance or share. So those remaining risks called residual risk. And why is this important for us to take a look at the residual risk? Because whatever we are investing on the risk response strategies. We need to see a big difference in reducing the negative risks and of course enhancing the positive risks in a way that would be considered a good investment. The contingency reserve is the summation of all costs associated with the chosen risk response plans. So taking a look at the risks and how much you're going to pay on how to handle those risks against how much remaining of those risks, that's actually what we call a reserve analysis. And you can do it throughout the project. And of course, if you're seeing uh, that the remaining risk is less than how much you're paying, that means you are doing a good investment. That's it. Thank you, everyone. I'm your trainer, Salah Haswa. Please feel free to contact us on info at p3knowledge.com or one of our social media channels. Thank you.